And back to the cancel culture stuff that we were talking about earlier. I'm in the opinion business. I'm paid to say what I think. And some people say, well, that's very arrogant of you. But I tell you what, I've never been so arrogant as in many, many people today who are so sure of their own ideas that they actually want to ban anyone who contradicts them. That's the cancel culture. And in sport, we've seen that particularly with the attempt to rub Margaret Court out of our history. She's actually the greatest female tennis player the world has ever seen, winning 64 Grand Slam events and claiming all four major tennis tournaments in 1970. Margaret Court is also champion of the poor. She's now leader of a church in Western Australia. It feeds thousands of poor families, giving away 30 tonnes of food a week. But Margaret Court is becoming the name that must not be spoken. And that's because she was against gay marriage, she opposes transgender procedures for children, and said that LGBTQ lessons in schools were the work of the devil. There have since been moves now to strip her name off the Margaret Court Arena in Melbourne and to deny her her Australia Day Award. What a country this is. So many wowsers like you'd never believe. Well, Kevin Sheedy, the AFL legend, as player and particularly coach, he has felt it necessary to say, no, I won't give in to this woke crowd. I will include Margaret Court in my new book of 27 icons of sport. Icons of sport. Get it now. Kevin Sheedy joined me earlier. Why did you feel it necessary to even defend your decision to include Margaret Court? What pressure did you feel under to exclude her? Oh, well, I think that, uh, first of all, the publisher probably asked me two or three times. Uh, my co-writer, Warwick, Wait. said, you know, you're going to cause a havoc um, if I do select um, Margaret uh, Court. And I said, well, look, that doesn't worry me at all, you know. And, of course, uh, when the Herald Sun wanted to uh, put a story in the newspaper, um, like to me, Margaret Court was a legend in my lifetime. I mean, the book was all about picking people out of every decade of my life that added value to me growing up and developing as a person. The whole, the whole reason is that there are iconic people, but there are also iconic moments in, in that seven decades that I've been alive. So from a point of view, um, it's very important that um, she, uh, along with Aidan Goolagong, because they played each other, and they only lived about two and a half hours apart in New South Wales. So I'm going to pick Aidan Goolagong in, and Margaret Cook was a better player than her. Um, I've got no reason to ever drop her off. And, and people just kept telling me about a group of people called woke or a theme or a world, you know, recognised body that woke doesn't like certain sorts of things when people make comments. Well, you know, I picked her because she's the great, greatest woman tennis player that Australia's ever had. And I don't believe that she should ever have uh, her name taken off that stadium down in, um, in uh, Olympic Boulevard in Melbourne. I think you're so right because, look, I don't like some of the things that Margaret Court says about gays either. But I try no, to see people in, do I, in the but whole. That's not the point. No, but, that, but exactly right. But, but in the whole, Margaret Court, I think, has done far more good than harm. <laughs> and I think, you know, when we come to a sporting honours, what she might say somewhere else, surely uh, leaving a name on the Margaret Court arena is the least you could do, given her contribution to the sport. What do you make of the attempts to say, well, no, no you, you can't have that because of something someone said one part of their life, they can't be recognised for what they've done in another? Well, I mean, I made a comment in the Herald Sun today that you would just automatically stop wanting to listen to Michael Jackson because he's put a baby over a balcony, which is a disgraceful, just, you know, just despicable act. But he's still a great musician. Elvis Presley died of drugs. I mean, Marilyn Monroe. I mean, you go, I could draw a book of that. That'll be my next book if you want to go that way. But, you know, and uh, I, you know, there are a lot of people out there that make very harsh comments about things that they expect people to expect because they like it. I mean, I don't expect people to like everything I make a comment about, but, you know, to me, you know, there was a group of people that maybe woke. I don't know, I'll be honest, because I don't know enough about woke, but, you know, I mean, when people said Black Lives Matter, I felt that every, every life matters. I've lost about six, eight friends of mine have died in, in the COVID over the last two years. Now, every one of those lives mattered, and I've spoken to Michael Long, I said, never be offended 
because I'm backing up that every life matters more than black lives matters because I do love my Aboriginal people of Australia. I, I, I think you're absolutely correct. But uh, to say that all lives matter is now an act of war. I just think it, it should go by the book that every life should matter. Um, yeah. Just going to your book, um, your list of sporting icons, I think it's a terrific list. Uh, Jessica Watson's in there, Ian Thorpe, uh, Cliff Young, the long-distance runner in his gum boots, and uh, Ash Barty, of course. Lionel Rose, great, great boxer. And one of my top heroes, of course, Yvonne Gulagong Corley. But, mm. Kevin, in choosing the top icons, you say that you still find it hard to split the difference between the American Cup skipper, uh, John Bertrand, great moment there when he uh, won for the first time against the Americans, the great tennis champion Rod Laver, of course, and Tour de France winner Cadell Evans. Why is it those three that you think, well, they're, they're really the icons for you? Well, I, first of all... Um, no one had beaten America ever in the history of that yachts race uh, in um, in America. Uh, John and his wife went to study in America at a very young age about the wind and the and the sea, um, about what could be done and how he could come back because he loved his yachting. He, he, he took yachting on as a, a local kid in the beaches around Chelsea and so forth. To go and study that, and then finally, approximately ten years later. Uh, they're given the chance to be the America's Cup captain um, and then go out there and start with a 3-1 deficit and then win the next three races in one of the greatest victories that Australia's ever beaten America in anything. Cadell Evans' classic was um, I was there because I was uh, the coach of the GWS Giants up in West Sydney. It was a bye in an AFL season. The Skoda was sponsor for... Um, of the Giants and the sponsor for the Tour de France. They took us over there. We uh, sat in the car in the peloton uh, in front of the race and to see how the riders raced viciously and, uh, and fast. The speed of it was enormous. And then up and down the, the mountain range. So I, I just felt that he'd been there about nine times and he'd won that race um, uh, fantastically well. And Rod Labor, well, I mean, look, he's... Um, he, he wrote it. his performance, making sure that um, tennis was going to be a professional, very courageous decision. He'd just been probably made the best tennis play, amateur tennis player in the world. He has to have the courage to leave the amateurs, lose the heart and soul of probably Harry Hopman, his coach, go to America with the, the Kramer group of people and run professional tennis. And then, of course, when he comes back, and they probably ten years later, approximately, they brought, they allowed, they allowed um, professionals then to actually play in the Wimbledon and the Australian Opens again. And he he come back after a decade, and then still started winning again in his um, late early to late thirties. So, you know, he uh, a very courageous person. So the book also tells you that. You know, it's, we should be inspired by our Australian icons because they come from anywhere. They absolutely come from anywhere. It just goes to the point, isn't it? It's not uh, an icon. It's not just someone who wins. It's also how they win that's so Correct. important. Kevin Sheedy, great to talk to you. Uh, thank you so much for your time and all the best with the book. Thank you very kindly. I really appreciate the time.